Well, good morning, Restore Church. How are we this morning? It is great to be with you today. I'm excited about today. Happy Father's Day. And uh, so grateful for you guys being here today. I know there's folks that are traveling and uh, school now school's out. People are going all kinds of places and summer has begun. Uh, but I'm excited about celebrating with you here today, whether you're here in person or watching online. We're grateful that you're here today and uh, grateful that we get to celebrate Father's Day. To Happy Father's Day to you fathers and grandfathers, spiritual fathers and mentors. We're so glad, glad, grateful to have you in our lives. Um, and uh, and that God's placed you on our journey of faith. And so I also recognize that these, this a holiday like this may be challenging or difficult for some folks. And I just want to send my heart, my compassion to you and know that God will comfort you and be with you today. Um, and we, we honor you and we honor the moment together. We believe that honoring is important. Honoring is like calling the gold out in someone. And, uh, and uh, as I was praying uh, for this service today, I just kind of got this quick glimpse vision that I began praying for. Um, for, for an entire generation of physical and spiritual mothers and fathers um, to have the gold called out in them and them living to their full potential that God get, that God created them for. And uh, as, as, I, as I just began thinking about that and praying for that for you, that as parents, as spiritual parents, uh, as grandparents, as spiritual grandparents, that you would begin to fulfill the purpose that God has created you for and live to the full potential. And, uh, and I just began dreaming about that. And so as we prepare for today, I just want to um, just want to let you know that there's going to have some fun today. We're going we're gonna to do some celebrating. And God's going to do some business today also. There's some things that God wants to, to get our attention with. So I don't believe it's by accident that you're here or we're watching online today. And I uh, just want to encourage you uh, in our time together today. Now today, uh, it may take some unexpected turns. We're going to talk about the theme of grilling today. Um, and this ends our sermon series of spring cleaning where we're talking about different elements in our lives that we need to begin to address or work through. And uh, I'm going to talk today about how to live a spirit-filled life or, or, or about living a spirit-filled life. And, uh, and, that, and, and connecting that with our theme of grilling today, God really can teach us about the Holy Spirit and our journey of faith through this message. But as we get into it, uh, each one of you were, or the dads or, or, or men in our church were given uh, uh, some tags here, uh, some tickets. And in that ticket, I actually have a, a, a lucky winner right here. We've got a bag of grilling accoutrements, as Jordan likes to use the word, uh, here in front of you. We like to give away. and so, But you got to be in the room. you got to be present to win. So i got a number here um, that I'm going to call out here in just a minute. You may be the lucky winner. This ticket will also get you some chicken and steak kebabs on your way out. We hope that you enjoy and have a great time together. Um, and uh, so is there a, a number 160? Anybody got that so far? One six zero. Okay, okay. So far. 587. Who's, who's 160 587? Anybody? All right, Gene. Look at that. Gene, happy Father's Day to you, Gene. Thanks for being here today. Hold on to your ticket. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on to your ticket. Hold on to your ticket. Sorry about that. Well, uh, you could take your ticket on the way out here and you'll get some kebabs. Enjoy. Um, we hope that you uh, celebrate and rejoice and have fun. Uh, but I, I've got a series of couple questions. I I want to make sure I want to ask you if I can if I could just be can for a while. Why why did the tomato turn red? Does anybody know? Because it saw the salad dressing. <laughs> All right, I'll stick with my sermon. I'll stick with my sermon. Okay, 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 okay. Now, grilling. Grilling is a favorite pastime of many people. This is a time of the year where we pull out, of our, our, pull out our grills and we get them ready for the grilling season. And some of you are brave that you, you actually keep your grills out all year long and you brave the elements with your flip-flops and your shorts in negative 40-degree weather while it's snowing uphill while you walk to, walk to school. You, you, yeah, it's the same storyline you used when you were a kid. You're braving the elements to grill all year long. If you do that, kudos to you. You're amazing. But for the rest of us, we pull our grills out uh, 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 and prepare them for grilling season. We clean them. We, we uh, get new propane. We prepare them. Uh, and, uh, and just as we go through a process of cleaning, of preparation, uh, God takes us through a, a process uh, in growing closer with him. And so uh, as we dive into today, as we talk about it today, I want us to get ready 
A few weeks ago, Pastor Thomas mentioned the idea of a, of a spiritual apron. And this, he was told this story of this mom who had like 20 kids and uh, she couldn't find a place to get away. And she would throw this apron over her head and, and just to get alone so she could fe- spend a few minutes of prayer. And if, if we could just begin our time together with a mo- mo- moment of prayer, if, we, if I could remind you, if I could ask you to put your spiritual apron on so you could be prepared to receive the message today and let God. God, begin to speak to you. Um, I, again, I don't believe it's by accident that you're here, but let's pray together. Let's get our aprons on. God, I thank you for this moment together where we could just attune, put our attention, our awareness on you. I pray, God, that you would speak to us. You know wherever we're at. You know whatever we walked in here with. You know what we're struggling with. You know the, the words that we need to hear. You know, God, how we can connect to you. And I pray, God, that you would, you would help us to connect people to an authentic and life-giving relationship with you. I pray that those walking in here who've never had a relationship with you will walk out starting one. And those who have had a relationship with you will walk out of here with an increased connection with you and with each other. God, I pray your blessing upon this time together. And my friends, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, as we get started in today's message, um, I, I want to talk to you about a problem we face, and um, and that is is uh, is is a, is a, a situation where you've got a, a burger or a piece of meat or something that you're trying to enjoy, and it's overdone. It's it's like tasteless. It's a, or or it's it's or worse yet, it's underdone in a manner, and it's just bland. You ever had that problem? You ever? You, you go maybe go to a restaurant and the, the burger that you're eating and it's just bleh, it's bland. There's there's just there's a, it's there's there's it's just it's just plain. It's just okay. And sometimes our Christian faith can be just bland. It can be just ordinary. It can be just okay. But but actually the scriptures tell us that our lives ought to be different than that. It ought to be different than just bland. There's actually some excitement to a, a, a an ordinary Christian life. There's some 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 joy. There's some flavor that ought to be filling your life. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about that. That's a life with the Holy Spirit. And and as we dive into today, I want to I want to tell you that that there's something important uh, uh, that, that 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 makes a burger or a steak different. And that's that's the the special sauce. I mean, think about McDonald's. You just go to McDonald's and you get a plain Jane burger, and then all of a sudden they they spice it up, take it up a notch, where they put the Big Mac sauce on it. I mean, if the Big Mac sauce ain't on it, it ain't a Big Mac. And and you know, I mean, if you if you go to a steakhouse and it doesn't have seasonings on it, and your steak's just bland, it may start to feel a little bit different. And I want to tell you, in in a spiritual journey, there's 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 special sauce, there's a special rub that 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 takes it up a notch, that changes things. And that special sauce, that special rub, if you will, is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, if you, you bite into that juicy grilled burger that's perfect, it's got this little extra zing to it. It sets it apart. There, there's something that's, you know, you know that secret sauce. I mean, maybe, maybe you need a little bit of Heinz ketchup on it or a little bit of A1 to it or a little bit of Sweet Baby Ray's. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you add, you add it just kicks it up a notch, the Hidden Valley Ranch. I don't know, I don't know what your secret sauce is, a combination of all those. Chick-fil-A's got a secret on some kind of sauce. So, but, but, but they, 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 there's something special that takes it up a notch. And that is true in our faith journey. That is the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power to be witnesses, to be his witnesses. And to be his witnesses isn't just a judicial term. It's actually more encompassing than that, that your life actually speaks to something, that your, your life has meaning and has purpose. There is much, there's power for purpose. The Holy Spirit is not a distant concept or a theological discussion. He's the dynamic, empowering presence of God in our lives. He equips us with supernatural abilities. He's transforming us from the inside out. Just as a secret sauce adds flavor to a meal, the Holy Spirit begins to flavor our lives, making us effective witnesses. Now, I want to I tell you a little bit of history. Um, and, and back in the day, I mean, back in before Jesus' time, in the Old Testament, uh, there, there was a, 
an establishment in the Old Testament where God didn't show up amongst people necessarily. He lived in what was called the whole the temple. And in part of that temple was he was removed from everybody. He was in the Holy of Holies and 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 his presence was in the Holy of Holies. And only one time a year could a high priest go in there and have have uh, have interactions with God. Only only limited people could have access. Only a few people could begin to experience God's presence. And then uh, that was how how faith was established. And then Jesus comes on the scene. He uh, he changes how things are. He he begins to to revolutionize the Old Testament in a way that he becomes the living sacrifice. We no longer have to do animal sacrifices to gain relationship with God. And he. He says when it when he went to the cross, it is finished. He began to finish that work, and what he was talking about was the 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 the, your, the relationship that now you also get because you believe in him. And here's what happened: there was a veil that separated the holy of holies from every other aspect of the temple courts. And when Jesus died, the moment Jesus died, that split from top to bottom. This thing was several inches thick, and there was no way on earth that a man could cut that. Uh, but it ripped from top to bottom signifying uh, um, the release of God's presence from confined to a select few, now available to the mass, to the many. And not only that, to confirm this later, Scripture says in Acts chapter 2 that he poured out his spirit and everyone in an upper room who was seeking and praying after God, God began to pour out his spirit. And in that, there was a prophecy found in Joel that Peter begins to, to share that, that, that uh, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And there, there, there's this, this scripture be, is, is, it was being fulfilled in those moments. And so we begin to see that, that, that you see this experience the disciples have in the upper room, which we'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, but, but they don't go back to living their old disciple, disciple ways um, from that point on. I'll, but I'll, I'll give you a scenario. Peter uh, had a relationship with, with Jesus. He, he grew up and, and learned what it was like. And many, many of us have a relationship with Jesus. Um, but, but this was before the Acts chapter 2. This was before the, the Holy Spirit was poured out. And what happened was is that uh, he was struggling. He was trying. He was working. And Jesus um, dies and and um and he's resurrected and still there's these moments where Peter's struggling and in the moments of Peter's struggle after his denial and you there's you 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 read about his story Jesus finds him again and restores him he restores him and oftentimes i see believers who go through this struggle back and forth and back and forth and trying in their own flesh and trying in their own selves to get things right are actually missing the secret sauce and you don't see Peter going back to this to the the same way of being a follower of Jesus once he experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, once he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You don't see him going back that way. And I want to challenge us to begin to pursue God in such a way that we have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I mean, you could try to scrape off that ketchup or the, the secret sauce, but it still leaves a mark. It's still on there. Same is true with the Holy Spirit. There's still something that he does inside of us. Friends, the Holy Spirit is not reserved for a select few. He's available to all who believe in Jesus. And if you haven't experienced the life-transforming tra power of Jesus Christ today, if you haven't experienced a relationship with the Holy Spirit, this is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are three in one. Today's a perfect day. If today's the day you can accept him, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior and ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill your life with his power and his presence to equip you. But I got, a, I got another question for you. Why did Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. I'm working here. We got to, I mean, whew. Thanks for the feedback. <laughs> I'll stick to my sermon, though. We, we need the secret sauce to our faith. The other, the other aspect that we need, to, we need to have in our journey of faith and living a life empowered by the Holy Spirit is actually no, point number two, to turn up the heat. 
The second point is actually all about cranking up the heat. And when you're grilling, the flame is essential for bringing out the flavors in the food. And sometimes um, when I start my grill, this is what I do. I don't know if this is how you start your grill. I don't know if this is how you properly start the grill. But this is what I do. I, t I start the grill, the flame's going, and I turn it up high. And I do this for about 10 or 15 minutes. And I let it, I let it cook off anything. I just turn and let it get hot. And then, and then what I do is I turn it down to the approximate temperature I believe I should be at with where, with where things need to be with what I'm cooking. Now, sometimes I will turn the flames down way low, and uh, it gets too low, and I throw the meat on or whatever I'm cooking, and it takes forever. It's not getting the char. It's not getting the flavor. It's taking forever. It's not cooking the way I need it to cook. And the reality of it is I have to go back and turn up the flame. And sometimes the same thing is in our Christian walk. We experience a relationship with Jesus. We give our heart to him. And then we go through this moment in our lives where our spiritual journey just begins to turn down the dial. And we kind of we fall back. And we don't see the same kind of results in our life, in our prayer life, and, and, and uh, in our spiritual walk as we once thought or as we thought we should. Well, let me tell you to turn up the flame, to turn up the heat. The Holy Spirit wants to ignite a fire in us, sparking a passion for God and his word. And I want to I want to say this for a moment that that we've got to be people who are are uh, we, we are an assembly of God church, we're Pentecostal meaning we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we believe, but believe in the scripture. Uh um, and there are some people that seek after the gifts of the Holy Spirit and not the giver. If you, don't, if you only seek after the gifts or the miracle signs and wonders, uh, then your theology is going to be wrong. And we've got to be people who actually pursue a relationship with God and those things that uh, come out of that come out of that. If my relationship with my kids are only focused on the gifts I give them, that's not real relationship as, as, a, as a father to children. One of the ways that I see this happening in our everyday walk as believers is not that we're responsive to the gifts of the Spirit. It's actually we stop responding to the conviction of the Spirit. And I want to begin to, to help us so that your flame is well managed, your passion for the Lord is well managed because as you grow through your life, the conviction of the Lord actually should be should keep you tender, should keep you, should keep your should keep you and sustain you. In fact, uh, I was looking at Romans chapter 12, and if you need somewhere to study or read or you want to dig a little bit deeper on, look at different versions of what Romans chapter 12 reads. But I'll just read this one, uh, one verse. It says this. It encourages us never to be lazy but to be enthusiastic in serving the Lord. Well, there's times where I don't feel really enthusiastic in serving, let alone serving the Lord. And yet scripture begins to encourage us here in a moment, and I've got to begin to live under the conviction. Can I be real honest? I had a dad moment yesterday. It was like God really getting my attention because I was about ready to come in and preach this message. Here we were having a conversation with, uh, with my kids, a few of my kids. We were gathered together, and it got intense. It got intense and heated and anger went back and forth, and we stormed off, and it, it, it was not a good resolve. And, and it went on for like an hour and a half. And then we ended the conversation, and I went away, and I'm right. I mean, I'm dad. I'm right. Where's my amens? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm right. But the issue is, is that the Holy Spirit began to convict me in those moments, and the reality of it is, is I was wrong, and I had to go back and not just restore relationship, but respond to God's conviction. And sometimes we're eager to go back to right the wrong in the relationships that, we've, that we've, we have to deal with, but we don't go back to yield to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And we've got to be people who are responsive, and that, let, lets, that, lets a, that shows us, that shows God that we are trustworthy with his presence, that we can yield to his conviction. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. We can talk more about that another time, but there's, there's, a, there's a difference. God operates in con conviction. The enemy operates in condemnation. He wants to keep you down. Conviction actually begins to set you free when you yield to 
his prompting. The Holy Spirit ignites a fire within us and is urging us to turn up the heat. Sadly, there's a statistic that shows that fathers in, in, the, home, in the home, the, the, the ratio, the number, uh, has declined over the years. But there's an interesting fact. When, you're, when, you're, when the fathers are actively involved in their children's faith, statistics indicate that the likelihood uh, that they'll continue on in their faith are significantly higher. Let me just, I'll share you the, you, with you the statistic. It's conducted by the National Fatherhood Initiative that when fathers are actively engaged in their children's spiritual lives, 75% of their children maintain active faith as adults. That's huge. So I want to commend you, fathers, spiritual fathers, uncles, father figures, for being here in these moments. You're doing more for the future faith of those around you in the next generation than you realize. The Holy Spirit wants to empower fathers and all believers to turn up the heat in their walk of faith. We actively engage with God, seeking His presence and guidance, and our passion for Him will grow. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, it says this, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And that would look like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. This is what Scripture tells us, that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And just like fire transforms raw or ingredients to a delicious meal. The Holy Spirit wants to transform our lives and set us ablaze with His power. But we've got to surrender to His leading. Allow the Holy Spirit to turn up the flame inside of us and live honestly, with integrity, with conviction, and let it stir our hearts. We've got to turn up the heat. But I have, I have another question for you. Did you hear about the restaurant fire? The stakes were too high. The other thing that I want to remind you in this grilling season, that, that grilling really helps us to, to gather around a table. That's number three, gather around the table. See, there's a lot of references to gathering around the table, a lot of places you can go with that reference, but the reality of it is, is God says that he created a table, and in that table, he created it in the presence of your enemy, and it's got the resources, it's got his presence, and, and, and the reality of it is, is he's invited us to sit at a table, not so that we can engage our enemy, but so he, so he can have our attention. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and God come, has come, Jesus has come to give us life, and life more abundant. In Psalm 133, verse 1, Scripture says, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony. Now, I'm the kind of person that loves harmony. I thrive in harmony. I struggle when there's relational tension. But but, but I love, I love that moment when, when brothers and sisters get together and they live in harmony. As we come together, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we create an atmosphere where people experience love and warmth and acceptance into God's family. Acceptance doesn't keep us where we were. That's foolishness, to stay in the same place. But God calls, calls us to grow. And our unity draws us into the fellowship with each other and encountering God's presence. We've got to embrace the call to gather around the table of God's grace, inviting others into the family, being that extension. Let's create an environment where people can experience the transformative power of the Holy Spirit and find salvation in Jesus Christ. As I was preparing this time together, I was thinking about grilling and and advice. Like as a dad, I want to give best practice advice. I want to, I want to, I want to bestows some spiritual practice advice, if you will. 
Do you know that there are 6,500 grill fires every year that result in about $27 million worth of property loss? So you need to learn how to manage that. I want to help you for a moment. My dad used to tell me, Adam, by, prepare, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And in grilling, it's important to have the necessary ingredients and the tools that you need. And the same is true to grow spiritually. You need to, need to set aside time for prayer and making sure you're in the Word and seeking God's presence. You need to prepare. You need to answer the question sometimes before you have to give an answer. Another best practice advice, I remember my dad telling me, Dad, Adam, don't leave your grill unattended. This is really about heat management. If you leave it, leave it unattended, it can get too hot and the flames can get too high. If you leave it unattended, the flame may go out. Proper management is crucial in achieving the desired results. Same is true with spiritual growth. We've got to manage our spiritual fervor and keep seeking after, stoke the fire that's within us, begin to be burning consistent and consistent devotion and seeking God's presence. I remember my dad also giving me this advice. He said, Adam, grilling's an art. It requires patience and timing. It's how we, it's how we move things towards perfection, right? In a spiritual growth, we need patience. We need to know that growth takes time. We need to be able to trust in God's timing in our lives. When it comes to the flavoring and seasonings, my dad said, hey, be generous. Be generous. Add the right seasonings and flavorings to enhance the food. Same thing with spiritual growth. We're called to to the fruits of the Holy Spirit and to bring out, uh, to, to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit bring out the flavors in our character and our interactions with others. I remember when I was first learning how to grill, I, I was fidgety. I mean, I kept moving the steak and flipping it over like every 10 seconds. I was like, oh, oh, is it done yet on that side? Oh, and I was moving it around. And, and, and the reality of it is, is my dad's like, don't move it too much. Just put it on the grill and let it be. And sometimes um, we don't move churches too much we may be settled here but we move relationships too much and it causes us to be shallow in our relationships you got to sit let it sit and let it be there for a moment and oftentimes we need to have a deeper sense of growth in our relationship and and, and be a, uh, uh, in a deeper relationship that actually encourages accountability and spiritual growth as we we wrap up here today i I just want you to know that God's doing something in the midst. I want to take a moment to address those who may not experience the transformative power of a personal relationship with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a special sauce that enhances our faith. But also the divine connection that draws us closer to God. If you're here today and you've not made a decision to follow Jesus, I want to invite you to take that step today. God loves you and he sent his son Jesus to die for your sins. Sins is the word that we use that describes missing the mark. And it's everyone sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God offers you a gift, and this gift is eternal life. And the Holy Spirit is calling you. He's wooing you. He's beckoning you to, to accept this incredible gift. It's as simple as acknowledging your need for a Savior and saying, I'm sorry for my sins. I had to do, I didn't even had to repent, is what we call it, yesterday. place our foot faith in Jesus. He's ready to forgive you, to cleanse you, to fill you with his Holy Spirit. It's not about trying to be perfect or earning your way to salvation. It's about receiving God's grace and surrendering your life to him. If you desire to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and experience the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you in a moment. You just pray. Pray with me for a moment. Bow your heads with me. You can pray this prayer out loud, and you can pray this to yourself, but this is a moment where we pray this to God, and this, this isn't a formula prayer, but it's something that helps us begin to grow in our relationship with Him. So, dear Lord, I come before you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I've fallen away, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son, and He died on the cross 
cross for my sins, that he rose again. God, I repent. I turn away from my sins and the things that separate me from you. And I ask for your forgiveness. I invite Jesus into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, come and fill me, guide me, empower me to live a Spirit-filled life. Thank you for your love and your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or you echoed that prayer. We've got a table in the back that's called our Next Steps table. We'd love to help you with resources to help you in your next step. And um, I want to pray just blessing over you. Would you just stand with me for a moment? And I've got one more question to ask you, if I can. God, I thank you so much for my friends. I pray that they would rejoice today, celebrate today, have fun today. But God, I pray that they would connect with you. They would have a life-giving relationship with you. God, I pray that you continue to help them grow and, uh, um, and, and into the people that you've called them to be with the potential you've given them. I thank you, God, for them, and I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I've got one more question for you. Knock, knock. Ha-ha. Cargo. Cargo, beep, beep. It's time to get out of here. And thank you so much for joining us this week. We love you. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Hope you join us next week as we kick off a new series with Pastor Jordan called Ever Wonder Why. God bless you guys. We'll see you again.